So this is a review of the Monopoly PowerPoint that I have posted to the class site. And basically what we want to talk about is we're going to follow up our talk about a market structure. And in particular, we're going to talk about a market structure in which firms in an industry have market power. Now, what do we mean by market power? Well, first of all, let's do a little review. Remember, every firm belongs to an industry, and every industry has a market structure. And market structure simply measures the level of competition in an industry. And you have to remember that when you define your industry, you've got to define it both broadly and narrowly. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, think about, um, you know, this, the firm is Sony. Now, Sony belongs to many different industries. So what we would have to do is we would have to look at Sony and the product Sony produces, product or division you're in. So in this case, let's say it's PS4, PlayStation 4 division. So how would you define Sony's industry in this case? Well, broadly defined, maybe you would uh, define it as video games. That's your industry. And it's broadly defined because you take into account many different competitors. Let's say hardware, makers of consoles, and software, the makers of the actual video games. So you take into account uh, EA games, uh, Ubisoft, um, Sony, Microsoft, that's broadly defined. And there's a level of competition and a particular market structure for the broadly defined market. Now, what we also can do is we could look at your industry from a more narrow point of view. And in this case, we only look at direct competitors. So let's narrow the definition from video games. We can go to consoles. Now, consoles hardware and basically we only have three competitors we've got sony ps4 we've got uh, microsoft and we've got nintendo right and that's a narrow definition industry and that has a particular market structure or a level of competition so basically market structure measures the level of competition a firm faces in a particular industry and we could define that industry broadly and we could find it narrowly. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to be looking at a market structure. So here, go like this, market structure. So this is market structure. And we can look at um, one extreme case of the market structure is perfect competition. That's what we talked last um, class or last chapter. And now we're going to be looking at a market structure at the other end of the spectrum, monopoly. So here we have perfect competition, high competition, intense competition, many, many firms producing identical goods. Nobody has market power. Market power is the ability to alter the market price of a good. Every firm is so small, you don't have any, an ability to do that. Here we've got another market structure where a firm is all by itself in an industry. So its market structure is monopoly. And in this case, you have market power because the firm has the ability to alter market price. How? Through supply. So if we look at the supply curve here, market supply, price, there's quantity, here's demand. If a monopolist decides to produce more, or to produce less at all price levels, you're going to shift the market supply curve, right? And if the if the monopolist restricts output at all prices, the supply curve shifts this way. And as you can see, the equilibrium price changes. It goes from right here to right here. Or if it expands supply, you can see it moves to here. 
So market power is exerted through the ability to shift the market supply curve. And when you have, when you're in a for, when you are in an industry all by yourself, uh, you, the supply curve that you face as the monopolist is, in essence, the industry supply curve. So, uh, you remember previously we talked about with a perfect competitor, they face a horizontal uh, demand curve. Every firm faces a horizontal demand curve. It looks like this. Right here. So this is a uh, a demand curve based. See that the competitive firm or the perfectly competitive firm has a flat demand curve. <clears throat> and for the industry, for a perfectly competitive industry, the demand curve looks like a normal negatively sloping demand curve, right, right where you see there. Now, to reiterate, the flat portion that you see right here basically tells you that the customers are very, very sensitive to changes in price. So much so, if you just raise price a teeny bit, you sell nothing. Now, if you lower price, you're going to sell a lot, but what we're going to discover is since this, well, what we had discovered is since this industry, a perfectly competitive industry is so competitive that um, price has been driven down to minimum average total cost. So if you try to charge a price that's a little bit lower, you're going to be taking a loss on every single item. And so um, you have no choice as a perfect competitor to charge the market uh, equilibrium price. But what we're going to see here with the, with the monopoly, this portion is eliminated because there's no distinguishing between a firm and the industry because the monopolist is the industry. So the industry demand curve for a perfect comp competition is basically the monopolist's demand curve. And so the industry and the monopolist are one and the same. So, um, as we just said, the demand curve facing the monopolist is identical to the demand curve uh, for the uh, for the product. And let's talk about price and margin revenue. Previously, for a perfect competition, we saw that price was equal to marginal revenue, and that's because of that flat demand curve. What we see here. And the reason why is because, remember, what's the definition of marginal revenue? Marginal revenue is the change in total revenue when you sell one more unit. So if we look at several units, oops, let me just erase that. Uh, one, two, three, four units. And let's charge a price of $5. So let's get rid of this. Now, when you charge, when you sell the first unit, where total revenue is P times Q. And marginal revenue is the change in total revenue over the change in Q. As you can see, we have T R Q M R. So we sell one unit right here, one unit. And uh, total revenue is P times Q, and that's going to be one times five which is going to be $5. Now, when we sell two units, two units, that's going to be two times five, which is $10. Three units, uh, that's going to be three times five, 15, and so on. You get the idea, right? Four units, $20. Now, March revenue is a change in total revenue when you uh, sell one more unit. So when we go from zero to one, the change in total revenue is five. When we go from uh, one 
to 2, 1 to 2, uh, the change is 5. From 2 to 3, the change is 5. And from 3 to 4, the change is 5. So you can see the reason that that's how we came with the idea is price, $5, is the same as marginal revenue, $5. This is not going to be the same for uh, monopolist. The reason why is the demand curve for monopolist is not flat. It's downward sloping like this, which means whenever you want to sell one more unit, you have to lower price. So price does not stay the same as is the case with a flat, flat demand curve. So let me just erase all this, oops. Go away, go, go, go. Just clear this all out. Now, this is almost all done. Get out of here. So let's take a look at this. I just want to show you this one here. So here we've got the quantity. We've got the price. Now you can see that along a demand curve, or along a demand curve, there's a demand curve like this. We see that, oops, maybe back up. We see that um, if you want to sell more units, you've got to lower your price. And you could see this, if you want to go from one to two, you got to drop your price from 13 to 12. And as a result, your total revenue falls and so does your uh, marginal revenue. And you can see that marginal revenue is falling faster than price. For every $1 price drops, marginal revenue is dropping $2, which means if you were to graph it, it would it'd be twice as steep than the demand curve. Now, this is important when we try to determine how much to produce because we want to maximize profit here. And we've, we're going to find where you're going to maximize profit where the last unit you produced has a marginal revenue. That's the amount of money that that last unit generated equals its marginal cost. And that's how much cost was incurred by producing that last unit. So let's take a look at this. Here we've got a demand curve. And here I just showed you how the marginal revenue curve is twice as steep as the demand curve. Now let's talk about how a firm maximizes profit. I'm going to show you how to do this graphically. <clears throat> um, I, I need to get the, to that graph. Here, hold on. Here we go. It's almost there. Okay. Come on. There we go, no, one more. Finally, so here we've got the demand curve, right here, and we got the marginal revenue curve, right here. And we drew, we've drawn our, our ATC, average total cost, right here, and our marginal cost right here. Now remember, the profit maximization rule is MR equals MC. And what we're going to do, based upon this graph, we're going to be able to determine the price charged, the output produced, the total revenue, total cost, and profit or loss. And I'm going to uh, show you five steps, excuse me, seven steps to find these five things, price, quantity, total revenue, total cost, and profit. So step one, find where MR equals MC. So remember, here's marginal cost, here's marginal revenue. And you find where they're equal, where the two lines cross. So here's marginal cost, goes up like this. 
and marginal revenue goes down like this. And so they cross right here. So that's step one. Let me just get rid of some of these lines here. Wrong. They cross right here. So that's step one. Now step two, find the output associated with that price. And we do that by going down to right above that intersection right here. We go there and that's step two, find output. So this is 500. So guess what, we found Q, right? Now let's find price. And we find price by going from here, from step two, up to you hit the demand curve. So let's go up, 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 right here. That's step three. And then once you found the demand curve, we now could establish the price charged for this output. And we do that by moving this way. And that's step four. So now we found price. So we're charging roughly $1,100. And we're uh, producing uh, roughly 500. And because total revenue is P times Q, we see that this area right here, is total revenue. So let me just get rid of these lines I just drew. And now let's find total cost. The way we find total cost is we go back from step four, we go back to the demand curve. So this is step five, go back to the demand curve. And now we find the ATC curve because right above the rate of output, right? Well, what's the average total cost for this rate of output? Well, we do that by finding the ATC curve. So we go back down, and now we found the ATC curve right here. So that's step six. And now we simply establish our average total cost at this rate of output, and we can do that by moving this way. And that's step seven. Establish your ATC, step seven. This is ATC, step seven. So because total cost is ATC times Q, that means this area right here is total cost. So if this area is total revenue and this area is total cost, this must be profit right there. And and you could calculate that by simply calculating your total revenue and subtracting your total cost. So total revenue is the area here. Calculate that. That's going to be uh, price 1100 times 500 minus this area right here which is going to be your ATC is 600 minus, um, times 500. And that's going to give you your profit, this area right here. So that's how, you, and this is going to help you on one of the quiz questions uh, in terms of using a graph like this and uh, finding your profit. Now, the big difference between the profit earned here and a profit earned in perfect competition is this profit has the potential to be earned in the long run. In perfect competition, if a firm is lucky enough to earn an economic profit, it just can't uh, keep it. The reason why is because other firms in other industries uh, see that profit being earned and it's above average. So they hop into the industry. And when they hop into this industry, when new firms come in, they drive down price. And that eats away at the revenues. Here in this case, monopolists have barriers to entry and uh, like a patent or a license. 
And these barriers keep firms from hopping in and competing away these profits. That's a big difference between perfect competition and monopoly. So that's it for now. This should help you answer some of the questions for the quiz.